Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. I'm Andrew Glazer, and today I want to teach you how to find the slant asymptote of the following rational function of x squared plus 5x div uh, plus 4 divided by x minus 1. If I could read, it would be nice. Now, it turns out that whenever you have a uh, rational function, which is just a complicated way of saying a polynomial function being divided by a polynomial function, whenever the power of x, the highest power of x in your numerator, which is squared, which is the 2, is one value greater, one unit greater than the highest power of x here in the denominator, which is one, you'll always have a slant asymptote. Now to find this, what we can do is we can do on this problem, we could do synthetic division or long division. We can always use synthetic division whenever the denominator is to the first power, but if this becomes to the second, well then we got a problem. Then we got to do long division. All right. So it might just be best to remember or to memorize more or less that when you're dealing with a slant asymptote, just use long division. Let's set it up. Bam. So the numerator basically goes inside of that long division symbol and the denominator goes on the outside. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your highest power of x here with its coefficient, which is just basically 1x squared, right? Or just x squared. And you're going to divide it then by the highest power of x with its coefficient of that original denominator, which is now known as the divisor, but which is just x. And you're going to perform that division. So the result there is just simply x. So you're going to take this value and you're going to plug that in on the top. That's going to be part of your quotient, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to take that value, well before you do this, you set up your little subtraction thingamajiggy, and you're going to take this x, you're going to multiply it by, uh, multiply it by every single term there of your original denominator, or aka the divisor. So x times x is going to be x squared. Now if you did this right, these two better match. Okay, And then you're going to take the x and multiply it by the negative 1, and that becomes a negative x. Now there's no guarantee anything will match from here on out. All right, so that's it. Now what you do is you take this negative sign, distribute it to every term on the inside of that parenthesis. So basically the x squared becomes negative and the x will become positive. And then you uh, add everything as appropriate, right? So those just cancel out. They annihilate one another. Then you have a positive 5x and a positive 1x basically. So you can combine them. Now it would be a 6x. And then you're just going to drop down the 4. There's nothing to add to that. Great. Now you start the process over again. As long as the power of x here, which is to the first, matches or is greater than the power of x here, which is to the first, you continue the process. Right, if this x wasn't here, then you'd be done. All right, well, then, but then again, it would be 10, but it doesn't, you know, 10, just, you'd stop. Anyway, what you're going to do, repeat the process. Take the highest power of x here, 6x, and divide by the highest power of x there, which is just x, along with its coefficient. Now, when you do this, it's just going to be a value of 6. And you plug that in, positive 6. Okay? Doesn't matter really where you put it on the top. And then what you're going to do, set up your subtraction thing in majiggy. Now take that positive 6 and multiply it by each of those terms there. So the positive 6 multiplied by the x is going to be a positive 6x, which should match exactly if you did it right. And then the 6 times the negative 1 should then be a negative 6. Now there's no guarantee anything will match from there on out. So take that negative sign and distribute it to each. So you're going to turn the 6x negative and you're going to turn the 6 positive and then just perform the indicated operation. So that just cancels, we'll see you later. And then the this becomes a positive 10. Now, as I was saying before, there's no x here, but there is a power, so you're done. This is technically now part of the remainder. So what you do is you write you know, plus 10 divided by then whatever that denominator or divisor uh, is, okay? Now it turns out that what's important here is the meat, so to speak, not the remainder, but this part, all right, of your uh, quotient. So this is, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That is the slant asymptote. x plus 6, done. It's a linear function, right? x is to the first power. Now, if you want to kind of see it out, I would highly recommend that you graph this thing, right? So do x squared plus 5x plus 4, and put that in parentheses, and then divide it by now the denominator, which is x minus 1. You got to have both of these in parentheses, otherwise it's not going to work out. And hit graph. So I only have part of the function here, so I'm going to try to adjust my window. There probably there should be something on the top. So I'm going to go up a little bit. Maybe I'll go to 50. Let's see what happens for y max. Yeah, there it is. So now that's the function. That's the function in blue, and maybe I'll go down a little bit just to make it a little bit nicer. We'll go down to negative uh, 50. All right, we'll hit graph. So there it is. All right, now you can kind of almost see the slant asymptote in here, right? So let's graph now our slant asymptote that we said, the x plus 6. So do x plus 6, and let's see what it looks like. Oh my goodness, look at that. Right? Let's blow it up a little bit. It's as good as it's going to get, ladies and gentlemen, with the jokes today. So um, 
here it is, right? You can kind of see this red line now coming very close to the original function, right? It's reaching an asymptote here as it goes all the way out. And this equation of that line, which was x plus 6, represents that slant asymptote, and that's all there is. So, everyone, thank you very much for tuning in. We really, truly want to help you through your class. We have thousands of videos out there dedicated to doing just that, where we help you with real problems. Okay? Actually, so actual solve problems. That's what you're going to see on your test. So you have to spend more time practicing problems and less time kind of studying your notes. you got to do both. But I see it all the time where students spend too much time looking at the notes and not enough time applying the notes. All right? And we have a whole channel dedicated to doing just that. If you ever needed extra help additionally outside, we'd love to help you also through that. You can contact us on our website. We do offer private tutoring. And um, we have a whole lot of resources out there just to help you through your class. All right, check the descriptions below over time because we're going to leave you some goodies. See you soon.